Welcome once again to this lecture series on basic research. Now, in this particular video, we'll be talking about induction, deduction, and abduction as a method used in researches. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing and clicking that notification bell so that you'll be notified when we'll be uploading videos like this. Now, we begin with this particular line of thought. There are two ways to establish true or false and draw a conclusion induction and deduction induction is empirical in nature deduction is based on reason and logic now what is induction or inductive reasoning by the way if you see a QR code displayed in your screen it means that we're quoting sources or sources in our discussion in this particular slide so you can scan on that QR code and you'll be redirected to that website where we source this particular discussion now <clears throat> Inductive reasoning in logic refers specifically to inference of a generalized conclusion from particular instances. In other words, it means forming a generalization based on what is known or observed. For example, at lunch, you observe four of your six co-workers ordering the same sandwich. From your observation, you then induce that the sandwich is probably good and you decide to try it yourself. Induction is at play here since your reasoning is based on the observation of a small group as opposed to universal premises. So inductive reasoning is forming a general conclusion out of a specific observation or a specific actions that happens within the ambit of your senses or an observable fact that you have seen and based on that you can formulate and generate conclusions now inductive research is a as an approach where a researcher begins by collecting data that is relevant to his or her topic of interest once a substantial amount of data have been collected the researcher will then take a breather from the data collection, taking the bird's eye view of her data. And at this stage, the researcher looks at the patterns in the data, working to develop a theory that could explain those patterns. Thus, when a researcher takes an inductive approach, they start with a set of observations. And when they move from those particular experiences into a more general set of propositions about those experiences. In other words, they move from data to theory or from specific to general. Most probably, researchers conducted in classrooms, in subject requirements that are given by professors in universities actually is in a form of inductive research, most probably. Why? Because this is one of the patterns or methodologies of conducting research. You start with the observable data and out of the observable and gathered information, you have to get out, you have to, you have to extract the meaning out of those patterns that are observable in the data collected. And so by getting the meaning of those particular patterns that form upon analysis of the data, you can then provide a generalized form of conclusion. And so you start with data gathering, look at the patterns in analysis, and then develop a theory, a general level of focus. Now, inductive research or inductive reasoning works by moving from specific observations to broader generalizations and theories. Informally, we sometimes call this the bottom-up approach. In inductive reasoning, we begin with specific observations and measures begin to detect the patterns and regularities, formulate some tentative hypotheses, 
that we can explore and finally end up with developing some general conclusions and theories. So we begin with observation. We recognize the pattern. We formulate tentative hypothesis. And lastly, we generate the theory. Now, theory is a generic and general perspective out of the observations and patterns. Next, we have deduction or deductive reasoning. Now, deduction is generally defined as deriving of a conclusion by reason. Its specific meaning in logic is inference, in which the conclusion about particulars follows necessarily from a general or universal premises. Simply put, deduction or the process of deducting is the formation of a conclusion based on generally accepted statement or facts. Now, take into consideration that if induction is coming from an observation all the way towards the general perspective of theories, deduction is the other way around. We begin with general principles, theories, and then it's broken down into pieces to come with a perspective of a specific and narrowed point. Now, deductive approach in research or researchers taking deductive approach takes steps described earlier for inductive research and reverse their order. They start with a social theory that they find compelling and then test its implication with the data. That is, they move from a more general level to a specific one. A deductive approach to research is the one that people typically associate with scientific investigation. The researcher studies what others have done, reads existing theories of whatever phenomenon he or she is studying, and then test the hypothesis that emerged from those theories. This is also a very familiar way of research approach by which we begin with a theory or an hypothesis, a general level of focus, and then we analyze the available data or information that have been taken by probably out of surveys or secondary sources for that matter and then we test the hypothesis our theory we test our theory whether or not it conforms with the data that has been collected and so we test the hypothesis whether or not the hypothesis is accepted or not and so in this particular approach we start with a theory now with the theory, we collect data. After collecting the data on a specific notion, on a specific context, we then test whether or not our theory is acceptable based on the data that has been collected. And so upon testing the theory, we can then provide a conclusion whether or not we were correct in our hypothesis or the hypothesis were true or false based on the collected data. And so that will become a specific conclusion. So deductive approach. We start with theories, analyze the data, and then test whether or not the hypothesis is supported or not. And so, in this particular instance, it reverses the process of induction. We now go to the process of general to specific, as opposed to induction, which comes from specific idea to general perspective. Now, deductive research approach is also used by students in universities, or probably professors who are doing researches by testing existing generally accepted principles. Now, deductive reasoning works from the general to more specific. 
Sometimes, this is informally called the top-down approach. We might begin with thinking about theory about a topic of interest. Then, we narrow that down into more specific hypotheses that we can test. We narrow down even further when we collect observations to address the hypotheses. This ultimately leads us to be able to test the hypothesis with specific data, a confirmation or not of our original theory. So in deductive reasoning, we start with a theory that has already been accepted. And then out of the theory, we formulate our guess, our hypothesis. And based on the hypothesis, we collect data probably by interview or by focus group or by secondary data that is already available in the internet and then based on the data that is available we seek patterns to test whether or not the hypothesis that we just formulated is supported or not so we have to confirm the last portion of deductive research approach is the confirmation of whether or not the theory is supported by the actual data that have been collected. And so there is a confirmation whether or not such a particular such a particular hypothesis is supported by the data or not. And so that is deductive research approach. Now, in abductive research approach, the research process starts with the surprising facts or puzzles. And the research process is devoted in their explanation. Surprising facts or puzzles may emerge when a researcher encounters with an empirical phenomena that cannot be explained by existing rings of theories. When following an abductive approach, a researcher seeks to choose the best explanation among many alternatives in order to explain the facts or the phenomenon that have been observed and identified at the start of the research process. In the course of explaining the surprising facts or puzzles, the researchers can combine both numerical and cognitive reasoning. Now, inductive reasoning begins with specific observations. Now, these specific observations were used to form general conclusions. Now, this general conclusion may be true, may not be true. Why? Because the source of the general conclusion is specific. It may apply to one particular context, but may not apply in other situations. And so... That is inductive reasoning or inductive approach. Now, deductive reasoning starts with a general rule and try to break down the general rule and observe the data that have been gathered out of the general rule and confirm whether or not the general rule apply to the specific scenario. So you take the general rule and provide a specific conclusion which of course is always true because this this is a confirmation of the general rule now abductive reasoning on the other hand there is no general rule or a specific observation there are there is an incomplete observation where at some point there is quite an impossibility to get the total picture of the entire range of the phenomenon being observed. However, there is enough data to predict what may happen in the near future or to predict what will happen based on the observable data. And the best prediction may be true or may not be true. It still depends whether or not the data that has been collected to verify the predictions may confirm the prediction or may not confirm the prediction. And that is abductive reasoning. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video.
discussion.